Oh, you dumb. <laughs> So welcome back, friends, to the next episode of the Common Man Shop. So we're putting together, we're still in the jack phase, we're putting together jacks and pulleys. But before we can move on, of course, we've got this problem that we had last week. So I really appreciate all the comments that came in and some really great suggestions. We're going to put a couple of those suggestions from you guys uh, to the test today and see if we can't once and for all free this 10-ton this bottle jack up. Several of you guys were of the same mind that what was needed was a good sticky piece of rubber inner tube, an old inner tube from a bike, pipe wrench, hammer, and some heat. So we're gonna, we're gonna try that first. So I, I have uh, put some penetrating oil, it's been sitting for a couple days. So I've got an, um, an oxyacetylene rosebud here. We can get all the heat we want, a good pipe wrench, a hammer, and a bicycle tube. So let's uh, put it together and see if we can't once and for all break this thing loose. As you guys remember from last time, we've got a cylinder here that's rotating and then this has been rusted or is seized and we can't get it loose. So one of the problems I was having was trying to figure out how to get a good bite on that cylinder. And lots of you guys recommended the, the bike tube. I'm like, well, that's good. So I'm gonna do a half overlap here. I'm gonna wrap it, as one of you guys said, like a golf handle. My granddad used to, he had no time for golf. You know, he was a, he was a simple guy. He, he was not a wealthy man and he always looked at golf as a game for uh, rich men. And he, he's like, I don't have time to go out there and play pasture, pasture pool. That's what he called it, pasture pool. All right, so we got a double wrap there. So what that's gonna give us, and I, we probably secure that with some electrical tape. What that's gonna give us is um, a, several layers of rubber uh, to protect that and it's going to grip like crazy because rubber doesn't want us move or scoot so that might be what we need right there i'm having a pretty good feeling about this i think this was a great great idea that's some old school mechanic in right there now we should be able to really bear down on that Snap-on vise, it's a good vise. It will most likely not move. That's pretty solid right there. Next, I think we ought to get a little, we'll get a little bit of heat on it. Uh, we'll use the oxyacetylene rosebud here. There's a good story to the stand right here. My granddad built this. It's a, I don't know, it looks like an old brake rotor or something down there and a piece of pipe. And he brazed this thing together as a holder uh, for his acetylene torch when he was doing some brazing. He built this. We were at the beach one time and you know how they have all those trinkets and those junk stores and you know all that little stuff of seagulls and, and so anyway there was some guy that had been making he'd made these little tiny uh, cars out of spark plugs we've all seen them before you know you have the two axles and then the big nuts in the back and the little nuts in the front you know and the little roll bar deal and so my, gran my granddad saw that and you know, he saw a business opportunity because he he saved everything. So being a mechanic, you know, he had all sorts of spark plugs. So he built this deal and uh, the two of us together used to braze those things with brass rod and we'd put them together and I'd cut the little axles and we'd make those things and we'd paint them up and put numbers on them and stuff and, uh, and he'd sell them at a local. I don't know, remember where he sold them, but we, I wish I still had one. I had a, I long since got rid of them all, but uh, that was a great memory. My granddad was not a super entrepreneurial guy, so I don't know what it was about the spark plug cars that uh, um, really got his mind turning, but uh, he, he really got into it. Now, don't forget when you're starting oxyacetylene, always start with the, with the acetylene, the red. On my hand, I'm actually using propane and oxygen. I got rid of acetylene, the propane goes so much further, but same thing, always start with the red and then the green. We don't want to get carried away here. We're not forging anvils. We just want a tiny little bit of Tiny little bit of heat. So the idea is if we can set this up here to let granddad's old stand hold it. What I've been, what I've been telling you guys here, how, how many times do I go to these things? Uh, the stand's a little bit short, so we'll prop it up there on the wedge. 
and get to uh, get some heat on that. So the idea here is we'll let the torch heat this up. I guess we'll know we're hot enough when the, when the tire rubber starts smoking. Uh, and when that's good and hot, we'll give it a good couple shocks with a heavy hammer and see if that won't help break that corrosion loose before we uh, attempt to give it a spin. While that's heating, we'll give this a, a shock. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a pipe wrench on here because the strap wrench that, that I have is, it's an oil filter wrench, it doesn't have any strength. So if we mar, the, mar these uh, threads up a little bit, uh, we can fix those with a file. Oh, it's turning. I think it is. Someone said, be sure it's not backwards thread. I don't think it is. We could work it both ways. Should go in this way. Oh, it's just twisting in the vise. One more time here. Okay, so I, I think I saw a little movement there, a little pop. Did I or am I just is it just wishful? No, it is moving. Oh, it's so tight. So I ordered, a, I ordered some um, evapo rust because I'm all out of it uh, that should be here in a day or two that I was, if, if this doesn't work, we're going to soak it in that and then this is getting to be a, we need to do this, this, just out of principle, we need to get this thing fixed. Okay, so we are getting a little bit of traction. We've got some movement now. Watch this. Okay, that's tightening if I loosen it here see that we haven't we didn't have that before it's moving independently from the cylinder and each time I do it, it seems like I maybe get a tiny bit more so we got it vertical now so let's clean this is where that thread goes and we'll clean up that area a little bit it's still got a lot of heat in it we can put some penetrating oil in there Can we work this? Without dropping it on my toe. Look at that. That was a huge success right there. Oh yes, look at this. All right, I know what we need to do now. One of the best things in the world is this anti-seize paste. This is the, my old neighbor, Henry, he was a, he was a tough old guy. He was an amazing, he never could learn to read, but he was a mechanical genius. He was a mechanic for a logging company for his entire life. This is a copper anti-seize, it's got copper in it paste. He always, he gave this to me actually. He's like, you gotta have the copper in it. Uh, also Loctite makes this, they sent me this stuff here. Um, which is the same stuff, but it's silver grade, anti-seize. Um, and if you have threads that you use, like on pullers and things, you can put that on there and it will never gall. Stainless steel, same thing. So if we can get, we're gonna use Henry's old copper. Get the copper on there, I think that's gonna free up. Here's a pro tip for you. You ever have a can with an applicator brush in it like this? Of course the brush never reaches the bottom of the can. And then how do you get it out there? Unless you go get one of your wife's forks and well, that never ends very well. Uh, so you can take uh, the can and you can smash the edges, get them folding over, don't, don't do too much, and then that will get that brush down there lower. You can do the same thing with your primer, your PVC or ABS primer and glue cans. Should probably get this thing moving. Well, it's still got heat in it. Look at that, that was it. 
that anti-seize is, it was just the top. That anti-seize is so good that it, uh, it's just in it, that heat with that heat. It's nice. It's kind of melting it down in there. Now I marred the, I marred it up a little bit with the, uh, the pipe wrench, but I think that these uh, threads are pretty coarse. We'll we'll see here if I can feel. Oops! I just ran out of pinch my wrench there. How's this for some extreme adapting? Three eighths to half, half to three quarter, three quarter to forty millimeter. Thanks to all your suggestions, by and large, we got the uh, we got the, the eight ton. It's an eight ton. I know it because it says eight. It's stamped eight in it. The eight ton bottle jack working perfectly. Uh, the I I didn't have to do anything with the threads where I grabbed it with a pipe wrench. Uh, I just put the anti seize on there, and it's just threads is uh, just sweet as a nut here. So I went through and and I collated all my jacks, and these are the four that I'm going. To, going to keep and the rest of them I've gotten uh, in the giveaway pile uh, but these are all my, my good quality ones so I've got a, a two ton a three ton an eight ton and a 20 ton that goes on my my press uh, so why do you need so many jacks well I'll tell you an interesting story uh, my uh, my first cousin bought a single car garage uh, from his neighbor down the road they live in Idaho uh, and it was uh, on a little foundation, and uh, the guy was going to tear it down and build something new. And my my cousin thought, well, I'd, I'd like to have it. I mean, it's all it's all done. It's got the windows in it and the doors and everything. So he took four bottle jacks like this, and um, and jacked that whole thing and pulled his uh, trailer. He had like a trailer similar to the one that I have. Put his trailer on there and got some timbers out there, and drove and moved that single car garage. Uh, down the road and onto a foundation at his own house and in a couple days work he had a whole garage built with the roof and windows and everything using these four jacks so I, I've always I'll never forget that that he did that but it gives you just a little idea of what you could accomplish the nice thing about these jacks is that they are really strong so if you have something you need to lift that you can't lift with the floor jack uh, these are certainly going to do it I mean this one here alone is going to lift 20 tons versus the floor jack which was what two two and a half not to mention it's super portable. So you can get underneath your house if you've got a sagging floor joist or something, and you can, you can, it's portable. You can take that down there and you can lift a tremendous amount of weight. When we first bought the place, I actually went around to all these posts in, the, uh, on this, in this shop. They weren't done correctly, and I had to uh, jack them all up because they were sagging. They didn't put a footing in the bottom and fix all that stuff. And I did that using this hydraulic jack right here. So. They're, they're not going to cost you anything at garage sales. They're going to be a dollar, five dollars. But what I recommend to be nice to have a couple, get a big one and a small one, you know, get like a 10 or 15, even a 20 ton and a one or two or three ton. It would be a really a great, a great deal. So yeah, that's nice. So if you're, if you're just joining us, just, I'll just kind of reiterate this, this series, it's kind of developing and I don't know exactly where it's going to go, but, uh, what, what I'm doing is I'm going systematically through the things in the shop um, that um, have all those projects that I've put off, broken things and things that need a little repair or need this or that. We're going to make a choice. Either we're going to fix them and keep them um, or we're going to give them away or if they're beyond repair, we're going to throw them away. So all of the jacks, all of that stuff laying around that was bothering me all the time and I would see them and think, oh, I need to put oil in that or I need to see if that thing works, it's all done. We've got two nice floor jacks that are working properly. We've got our four jacks here that are all cleaned up and oiled and the, and the levels checked and I made sure that it had NICs on everything and it's done and I don't have to worry about it anymore and we found a place for it. Another little victory, and I think that's what these big projects come down to these enormous projects you know the eat, eating the elephant one by the time analogy is that when taken as a whole as i have spoke to when we started clearing our forest it was such a big job before we had any equipment uh, I, I it was overwhelming and it kept kept us from even getting started uh, we picked out that one 10 by 10 patch and cleared that and got a little traction and then once you get it's that wedge once you get that wedge in there or the foot in the door then anything's possible 
the thing that's kind of interesting about this is um, what's kind of what's fun for me is there's so th this bench has never been usable to me because it's just been a catch-all uh, for junk and clutter and a place to put things you didn't know where they went. If you couldn't put them in the toolbox, the place where tools go to die, uh, you'd put them on this, and then it just ends up being just this massive cluttered thing. So, when I started, I started uh, Hebrew style from right to left, and we will. Uh, Go through there and, and, and take the item by item, you know, like right next, next to us here are uh, uh, chains. I've got buckets of, of different chains around here and some have hooks on them and some don't. Some have the wrong size hooks. And then I've got tire chains and tire chains going back uh, 25 years. Do they even fit anything that I have anymore or that I'm going to have? You know, running 38 inch uh, uh, gumbo swamper mutters on your Bronco. You know, that's not something I'm ever going to do again. If I still have tire chains for that, why am I packing them around? Let's give them to someone that can use them or cut them up and, and to fit something we already have. So maybe that will be the good next video. We'll pull out all of our chains, tire chains, sync them up. Do we have what we need? Why are we moving tire chains around for tires that we are not going to keep anymore? Time to get rid of that stuff and to know. So maybe that's what we move on to next or rigging. So yeah, I, it's, um, it's very fun. I, just. In closing, the thing that's kind of cool when you get one little, when you get a little bit carved out or one room in your house organized or one part of your life kind of in order, uh, it starts to catch on and starts to become kind of addictive. Uh, when I walked in here uh, to the shop, instead of looking over here and thinking, oh man, I got to deal with those blocks and that cribbing and the jack stands and I got stuff all over the place. Um, I looked at it and it was real, it was, gave me a little bit of pleasure and joy. I'm like, oh, that's nice. That was a job that I, that's done well and, and it's done, um, it, I'll never have to worry about it again and I can move on to other things. And just think if you could take a hundred of those little deals in your life that are worries to you or unfinished projects, if you could start chipping away and, and do, uh, you know, a couple, two or three, four or five a month at the end of the year, That'd be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? Just to have that, what an accomplishment to be able to look back and see that. And I think that by continuing to do that, it affects other portions of your life. And I just noticed for me, I was doing a little bit of wiring on the adventure van and I took the time to, to have everything laid out and, and organized and that, that neatness and that excellence uh, or attempted excellence certainly translates into my work. Um, I wasn't frustrated because I had what I need. I wasn't tripping over things and, and it, it gave me more time and, and it, was just, it was a joyful process rather than um, a toilsome burden uh, that um, so many of those jobs can turn into. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.